Anyway, it is hard to tell because uh, I can't actually watch myself um, as I uh, as I do this. So my apologies. Uh, let's let's do a take two of that, um, and uh, this time uh, it should have no more problems. Um, we're going to be watching right now, as I said before, uh, set five um, MIT versus Yale because of the fact that uh, MIT's set four player had to take a test and uh, had to uh, therefore forfeit the game. So uh, we're going to be watching um, Stryker versus Delahan here in the final set. Uh, of course, this is Stryker once again, the brown Zerg at the uh, top right on Blue Storm, and this is Delahan. Um, yeah, I did. I am going to speed through this because I cast it for about a minute with my uh, mic off, evidently, uh, one of the settings that's pretty important um, when you're doing commentary. Anyway, let's uh, slow down and... Uh, as we saw before, we are getting the probe into Stryker's base. Um, Stryker just now is uh, building his Overlord again. Um, and we'll see what he does. Uh, if he's going to go for a relatively fast build, maybe think about a, an overpool. And he is going to go for the overpool. So uh, this is what he did in game one also. Evidently, he does enjoy uh, going for the overpool. And we'll see if he decides to follow it up with uh, speed also. And looks like he is going to get the gas. So it's going to be an overlord, uh, sorry, overpool speed build here, and uh, most likely leading into a run by. Certainly not a bad option for Blue Storm. This is, uh, you know, I'd say about maybe 75% of the time um, when you play among foreigners, this is what happens: speedling rush um, or speedling run by on Blue Storm. And uh, certainly, um, it's not going to be cheesy like in the first game. Where he didn't do a run by, he did a. I'm gonna mine your back minerals out, uh, and just kill you. Move. Um, so Delahan here has his uh, cannons going up, kind of in an awkward position. Um, it's actually gonna stop the run by pretty darn well, but it might not prevent uh, harassment without a third cannon um, because he's you know not gonna be able to protect his entire natural expansion with these two. Meanwhile, um, Delahan doing a good job here of keeping his probe alive. Very important skills. And uh, also being annoying with it. Also good to do. Um, and here we're seeing the first lings out for, uh, for Stryker. And Stryker, ooh, almost losing that Overlord. Wow, that would have been bad. Um, next is going up now for Delahan. Uh, he's got probes in good position here should be able to protect against um, any kind of run by. And uh, he's also uh, still got the scouting probe alive. Stryker, meanwhile, getting uh, his speed, of course, and um, he's going to be expanding right afterwards. And he's just killed the probe, so that's going to allow him to uh, you know, either build one or two hatcheries um, without uh, getting scouted. And that's, that, that is an important thing to notice. You know, If he builds just one hatchery and then goes for lair, um, obviously it's going to be a fast tech build. Uh, if he gets two more hatcheries, uh, especially if he double expands, it's going to be more of a standard build. Um, we'll see what he dops. Right now, it doesn't look like he's resuming gas mining, so he's probably going to go for um, a uh, three hatch opening here. He's got about 12 lings, actually. So uh, I don't know what he's thinking right now, but maybe he's just thinking about going for it. That is a possibility. I don't think it's going to work, though, necessarily, with those three probes there. Um, uh, you know, going for it, as in trying to kill the cannons, uh, there's really still no chance of a run-by. Um, and, and, you know, without being able to do that, uh, his lings are not going to be as effective as he wants. But hold that thought, he is going to be going right now for the cannons. And, oh no, one of the probes moved out of position. That probe... Not very intelligent, and uh, now it does seem like Stryker has got himself five lings inside the base now. And uh, let's see if Dullahan can react properly. He needs to get himself a cannon right here. Uh, instead, he's sending out probes to die, um, and, and that's not good. I hope Dullahan gets that. Oh, he needs to get a cannon. Uh, it's three probes down already. Um, and geez, this is so hard for the Protoss to deal with. Uh, you know, this kind of just constant harassment. Um, and it doesn't look like he's going to be able to get down a uh, cannon, or if he doesn't want to, I guess. Um, he's using his resources for something else. But really, this by itself has managed to swing the game quite a little bit towards Stryker's favor. Stryker taking down the fourth probe, I believe, um, with these uh, with these lings. And also now, no gas notice for Dullahan. That means Dullahan uh, definitely going to fall behind in tech also. And uh, meanwhile, we're seeing Stryker going for a standard 
double expand here, getting his lair. So three hatch lair build here from Striker, still managing to do more harassment inside Delahan's base. And you know this is uh, just just so difficult for for Protoss to deal with. Um, Especially because he hasn't built a cannon. I think he should have built a cannon at this point. Uh, I, that's got to be the fifth or sixth probe that uh, has been killed so far th in this big raid. And, um, yeah, that's going to be seven probably. Seven there. Uh, and, and also, let's not forget that these probes are running back and forth. Um, not mining, of course, as they're trying to be uh, microed away from the killer lings. And these lings are just ridiculous. Um, doing so much damage. And uh, really... Dullahan now in huge trouble. Still no gas up anywhere. Still possibly more probes going down. Wow. He has got all of about 10 probes right now. And it seems like there's still a pair of lings alive somehow. Jeez. So Stryker has really, um, you know, shown uh, how he can he can take an early game advantage. And, you know, and that's that's highly important. Um, nothing, nothing to be ashamed of there. Uh, gas finally going up. For uh, Dullahan, looks like Stryker is just gonna, yeah, let one ling live here, and it's gonna go down. But he has done enough damage um, to really cripple Dullahan at this point, uh, which is too bad because uh, I was expecting more of a long match. But now, really, um, like I said before, Stryker is gonna have to become Hyuk um, or Fire Fist in order to uh, lose this game, and even Hyuk might not lose this game. I don't know what am I saying. Hyuk would find a way to lose this game. Uh, so Spire being built for Striker. Um, Striker might just go for, uh, yeah, he's actually just going to go for straight up Mutalisks here. As you can see, he's not going for um, more hatcheries. He's getting a set. He's got a second gas, which means that he really wants a lot of Mutas. And he can certainly win with this uh, because, you know, I don't think Dullahan's going to have anything. He's not going to have Corsairs. He's not going to have Archons. Um, and he doesn't even have, uh, well, he's looks like uh, he manages to keep all of his cannons alive, at least. But, um... Seriously, he is so far behind on gas, and he still does not have any tech after a core just yet. Um, probably going to start thinking about putting down a Stargate, and uh, that is going to be what happens is a Stargate. So we'll see um, if this manages to do anything, though, against the onslaught that's about to come. There's there's a Spire finishing, and uh, looks like Striker was well prepared with his... Um, Larva, so he should be morphing a good, you know, eight mutalisks right now. And he's got yet more lings, too. Just going to uh, kill off this probe, and that's going to once again deny Dullahan any knowledge of what's going on. I think Dullahan at this point can start suspecting mutas, though, um, because uh, of the lack of hydras. I mean, if there were hydralisks of any sort, if there was any kind of hydra build, he would have seen probably a hydra by this point. Uh, and, and, oh man, an expansion going up at the 6 o'clock location. Uh, that is uh, not going to be scouted for quite a while, I think, for Dullahan. Um, it also is a very audacious place to put it, to say the least. But uh, certainly, I think he can he can probably keep it at this point. Um, there's not much that's going to uh, go right for Dullahan for the rest of this game, I think. He does not have any cannons up, and uh, these Mutalisks are now going to just tear into his base. Oh, this is going to be brutal to watch, unless you're a Zerg player, in which case uh, you think it's awesome. And I am a Zerg player, so this is pretty freaking awesome. Yeah, uh, <laughs> but yeah, it looks like Striker is going to take out this main entirely. Wow, the probes are, are refugeeing like it's Vietnam and it's 1974. Uh, run away. Um, so it looks like the South has been abandoned, uh, and and it is gonna uh, fall here pretty much. Um, actually, no. It looks like Striker is just gonna go for more harassment. Oh, picking off the uh, Corsair, and Striker is seriously Imba for MIT here. Striker showing that uh, that MIT has what it takes here, and it does seem like MIT um, should be able to take this series here, despite uh, having to forfeit one game. Striker is just uh, is just too good, basically. Um, he uh, looks like, yeah, I mean, he, he's got himself about a dozen uh, mutalisks there, and unfortunately for Dullahan, there's still no cannons up anywhere, um, and that is going to cost him. Uh, right now, we're seeing one Corsair, this Corsair just getting micro to death by pure mutalisks, and uh, yeah, Dragoon out, Dragoon's not going to do anything. 
Let's take a look at what's inside. I mean, it doesn't even matter what's going on. Um, but as you can see, Stryker actually uh, keeping his resources reasonably low. Uh, and he's got very strong APM throughout this entire game. i got to say, Stryker is uh, looking like quite a strong player and a strong contender for the uh, semifinals, too. Where um, We're going to be seeing... Uh, I actually don't know who they're playing. I think they're playing the winner of uh, Beijing University versus... Uh, Stockholm, the Royal Institute of Technology. Um, GG coming from Yale. Dullahan, uh, playing a good game, but, uh, Stryker really just, just taking the early advantage and, of course, not letting it go. Stryker, uh, winning two games out of the three that MIT needed to win this quarterfinal series and move on to the next round, um, of this Cotter Cup, uh, sponsored by, uh, Kevin Cotter, in honor of his brother, um, Brian Cotter, of course, I uh, should have mentioned that. Uh, there is a $1,000 prize pool, so that's uh, very exciting. Um, and uh, we're, we're going to also have casts up very soon of Tsinghua University versus uh, CAST, um, Korean Advanced Institute of Science and Technology. That was played earlier today, and that uh, those casts will be up on Biotech. I'll also try to... Um, upload them here on Ustream too. Uh, and uh, we'll have tomorrow morning Beijing University versus uh, the Royal Institute of Technology from Stockholm, Sweden. Um, and th that will also be cast after the fact. It won't be cast live because it's uh, in the early morning for Americans here. Um, and those games will be put up too. So uh, right now, congratulations to uh, MIT. They're going to be moving on, and they're going to face uh, either Beijing or Stockholm next. Uh, thank you guys for watching, and sorry for uh, those uh, technical difficulties in between. I uh, hope you guys enjoy these casts. A uh, bit short, but um, we're going to call it a night right here. So thanks for coming. GG.